Hello, beloved. Whatever happened to King Saul? We'll find out in our reading today from 1 Samuel 31. I'm Pastor Steve Billings, and today is Saturday of the ninth week after Pentecost, August 13th, 2022. Let's begin with our opening versicle. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Our psalm for the week is Psalm 33. Shout for joy in the Lord, O you righteous. Praise befits the upright. Give thanks to the Lord with the lyre. Make melody to him with the harp of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully on the strings with loud shouts. For the word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, and by the breath of his mouth all their host. He gathers the waters of the sea as a heap. He puts the deeps in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke, and it came to be. He commanded, and it stood firm. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He frustrates the plans of the peoples. The counsel of the Lord stands forever, the plans of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. The Lord looks down from heaven. He sees all the children of man. From where he sits enthroned, he looks out on all the inhabitants of the earth. He who fashions the hearts of them all, and observes all their deeds. The king is not saved by his great army. A warrior is not delivered by his great strength. The war horse is a false hope for salvation, and by its great might it cannot rescue. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love that he may deliver their soul from death and keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart is glad in him, because we trust in his holy name. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our hymn is number 666 from Lutheran Service Book, O Little Flock, Fear Not the Foe. O little flock, fear not the foe, who madly seeks your overthrow. Dread not his rage and power, and though your courage sometimes faints, his seeming triumph for God's saints lasts but a little hour. Be of good cheer, your cause belongs to him who can avenge your wrongs. Leave it to him, our Lord. Though hidden yet from mortal eyes, his Gideon shall for you arise. Uphold you and his word. As true as God's own word is true, Not earth nor hell, satanic crew, Against us shall prevail. 
There might a joke, a mere facade, God is with us and we with God. Our victory cannot fail. Amen, Lord Jesus, grant our prayer. Great Captain, how thine arm make bare. Fight for us once again. So shall thy saints and martyrs raise a mighty chorus to thy praise forevermore. Amen. Today's reading is from the first book of Samuel, the 31st chapter. Now the Philistines were fighting against Israel, and the men of Israel fled before the Philistines and fell slain on Mount Gilboa. And the Philistines overtook Saul and his sons. And the Philistines struck down Jonathan and Abinadab and Malkishua, the sons of Saul. The battle pressed hard against Saul, and the archers found him, and he was badly wounded by the archers. Then Saul said to his armor-bearer, Draw your sword, and thrust me through with it, lest these uncircumcised come and thrust me through, and mistreat me. But his armor-bearer would not, for he feared greatly. Therefore Saul took his own sword, and fell upon it. And when his armor-bearer saw that Saul was dead, he also fell upon his sword, and died with him. Thus Saul died, and his three sons, and his armor-bearer, and all his men, on the same day together. And when the men of Israel, who were on the other side of the valley, and those beyond the Jordan, saw that the men of Israel had fled, and that Saul and his sons were dead, they abandoned their cities, and fled. And the Philistines came, and lived in them. The next day, when the Philistines came to strip the slain, they found Saul and his three sons fallen on Mount Gilboa. So they cut off his head and stripped off his armor and sent messengers throughout the land of the Philistines to carry the good news to the house of their idols and to the people. They put his armor in the temple of Ashtaroth, and they fastened his body to the wall of Beth Shan. But when the inhabitants of Jabesh-Gilead heard what the Philistines had done to Saul, all the valiant men arose and went all night and took the body of Saul and the bodies of his sons from the wall of Bethshan, and they came to Jabesh and burned them there. And they took their bones and buried them under the tamarisk tree in Jabesh and fasted seven days. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me as we continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. The third day He rose again from the dead, He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people, and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, who have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, it is by your grace that we live as your people, who offer acceptable service. Grant that we may walk by faith and not by sight in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today we return to Meditations on Divine Mercy by Johann Gerhard, translated by Matthew Harrison. Let us pray. O omnipotent, eternal, and merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by the Holy Spirit you gather the Church from the human race and preserve in it the most holy deposit of heavenly teaching. I humbly praise you and submissively ask that you preserve undefiled the saving doctrine of your word among us and daily extend more widely the bounds of the Church. Out of your boundless mercy, set a light for us in this dark world, the light of your word. Do not allow it to be extinguished or obscured by the fog of human tradition. Give to us your word as salutary food for the soul. We ask that you would prevent Satan's deceit and people's corruption from turning your word into a poison for us. Put to death in us the corrupt lusts of the flesh that thirst after earthly things. Instead, may we taste the delights of that hidden manna, the spiritual things of your word. But no one will experience its sweetness if it is not tasted. No one tastes it whose mouth is still full of the world's delights. Your word is a word of spirit and of life a word of light and grace. Take away fleshly desires and the corrupt feelings of our hearts so your word may enlighten us within and lead us to the light of eternal life. From the light of the word arises in our hearts the light of saving faith. In your light we see light. In the light of the word we see the light of your Son. Just as that heavenly manna once fell in the wilderness in a saving dew, so also by the hearing of the word our hearts are filled with the fervor of the Spirit. This fervor inflames our cold, lukewarm flesh while moderating the heat of depraved lusts. May this holy seed of the word take root in our hearts and, excited by the dew of the Holy Spirit, bring forth salutary fruit to produce an abundant crop. O Lord, guard the vine that is your church, in which that seed is sown. Guard the fruit until it is harvested in eternal life. Surround the vine with the hedge of an angelic guard, so wild boars and foxes cannot root it up by violent persecutions or deceitful seductions. Erect in this garden your church, the high watchtower of your paternal providence, so you may keep it safe from all devastation. If it seems good to you to squeeze this vine's clusters of grapes in the wine press of the cross for a time, and to subject them to affliction, may they first become ripe by the fervor of your grace, so they may produce the sweetest fruit of faith and patience. Whatever is placed on the young root is changed in the clusters of grapes into the sweetest juice of the vine. Cause our souls to change the ridicule, persecution, praise, and whatever else befalls us in this world into the wine of faith, 
hope, and love, and into the fruit of patience and humility. Out of this church militants carry us forward at last to the church triumphant. May this portable tabernacle be changed at last into the most beautiful and everlasting temple of the heavenly Jerusalem. Amen. Let's conclude today, as always, with Luther's morning prayer. Let us pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things, let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come before you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, order our days and our deeds in his peace. Amen. God bless your day, beloved.